love it, brothers and sisters. I greet you in the blessed name of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our God, our Savior, and our blessed Redeemer. We thank God this afternoon we are here, my beloved, on this sad occasion to join with the family and the friends and our brothers and sisters, the neighbors. Here we are, my beloved, to celebrate the life of our late brother, Peter. Amen? Amen. So we are going to begin our devotion. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer and kindly ask for the voice, a servant of God, to lead us to the soul of grace. Beloved, let us all stand. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have made, O oh God. We know, Lord, you are great, you are powerful, and you are mighty. You are God that don't make a mistake. And dear fathers, we have gathered here this evening. We know, O oh Lord, this dearly beloved brother, O oh Lord, we'll be missing him. But we have that hope and we know where, he's go where he will be going, O oh God. And if we continue to follow you in spirit and in truth, we are going to meet him someday, O oh God. Amen. And dear Father, we are, we are about to begin this service. We thank you that everything will be done to your honor and to your glory. And dear Father, there will be no mishap. Everything will work out well and we thank you in advance. O oh Lord, after the service is completed and we go to have the body cremated, dear Lord, take full and complete control. You are God, you are great, you are powerful, and you are mighty, O oh God. There is none like unto you. And dear Father, we are your children, and we can depend upon you. We are weak, but you are great and mighty, O oh Father. Amen. Not forgetting, O oh Lord, the children that they are aware, O oh Lord. We know they are grieving, but O oh Father, there is no distance with you. And dear Lord, you will make it possible, you will give them that consolation, that, O oh Lord, this brother of theirs did his part of the eldest. And dear Lord, that the family will continue to live in that bond and in that unity. Take full and complete control. In Jesus' name we do ask it all. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise Jesus. Praise the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Do we have the seat still of it? Very, very family. I beloved, I extend my sincere condolences. This time an hour of the grief and the sorrow. Amen. So we are going to take a psalm from the word of God. Psalm number 90. Reading from Psalm 90, here where it says, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight, how about is his study, when it is past? And as a what in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as a sleep. In the morning they are like grass, which goeth up. In the morning it flourishes and goeth up. And in the evening it is cut down and withered. For we are consumed by thy anger. And by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be forced for it, yet is the strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut out and we fly away. 
Who knows the power of thy anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us the number of our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee according to thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto the children, and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. And establish thou the work of our hands upon us, yea, the work of our hands, Establish thou it. Praise the Lord. Amen. May the good Lord add his richest blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of his divine, holy, and inspired word. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. This afternoon, my beloved, in the midst of that, we can still rejoice and give God praise, honor, and glory. So our song, first song this afternoon will be Blessed Assurance. If you look at your program, it's the first song there, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine.
this evening we can only claim that blessed assurance. My beloved, when we are born again, when we are washed in the blood of Jesus, Brother Peter, my beloved, live with that blessed assurance. That one good day, my beloved, amen, he will be with his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Glory. So we'll continue rejoicing and giving God praise on and glory, my beloved. And these are songs of comfort, not only to the family, but to every one of us. So the next song that we're going to take on the second page of your program. Amazing grace, how sweet that sounds. because of the grace of Almighty God, we are here this evening, my beloved. And it's by the grace of Almighty God, we have been saved like Brother Peter. We have been saved, my beloved, from the powers of sin and Satan and darkness. But the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, my beloved. Amen. Not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, 
let any man feel the bones. Praise the Lord. Amen. We'll take one more song and then my beloved Amen will have theology. I will take that one in a little while we are going home. Let us sing a song. Are you ready for that day and are you ready for that moment? Amen. My beloved amen, when the good Lord will call us just as he called Brother Peter, my beloved, to be with him glory. Make sure that we are ready, my beloved, to stand before our holy God. Amen. amen. In a little while we are going home. We shall cross the billows home. We shall all meet at last. My beloved, that is the hope every one of us live in. That I believe that at the end of our journey on the other side, we are going to meet with our beloved brothers and sisters in the Lord. Amen. So I now call upon Brothers Boise and Brother Sichon, one of the brothers of our late brother. I believe it, amen, who will present us the reality of the Lord bless you. Dearly beloved, I am going to read a eulogy, not my eulogy. I was asked to do the eulogy that Brother Muki sent, he and the family. 
unfortunately, you could not have been here, but you know his spirit is here in our midst. Your life was a blessing, your memory a treasure. You are loved beyond words and missed beyond measure. We are gathered here today in the memory of my brother Peter, so that together we may acknowledge and share both our joy in the gift that his life was to us and the pain that his passing brings. In sharing the joy and pain together today, we may lessen the pain and remember more clearly the joy. My brother Peter, whom the Lord called home on July 4th, 2021, was everything to my brothers, sisters, and cousins. When my parents passed away several years ago, he became the head of the of household to us. We felt comfort in him because he looked after us. He was a fatherly figure to all of us, even though we are adults. And we respected him for this, for every one of my cousins respected him so much that they will call him brother. Peter was highly respected by people in the community and in the church in which he taught Sunday school for many years. One of his former Sunday school students called me, that is Moti, and cried when she heard that he had passed away. Few people remember my brother's academic achievements. Sometime during 1960 and 1961, when Presentation College had now opened its doors, Peter received a grade one certificate. He then sat his higher certificate exams. He was the only student to receive a full certificate in those days. You had to pass three subjects on a subject called general paper. He was the only one to achieve this feat. He was a master in Spanish, French, and European history. His name was the first from presentation to appear in the newspaper. His achievement brought inspiration to all his brothers and sisters. His, my parents were not educated, but he inspired us to follow his footsteps. He was the first one in the family to accept the Lord Jesus as his savior. And he worshiped the Lord until the time of his passing. All of his brothers and sisters also accepted the Lord Jesus as their savior. My brother Peter, thank you for being my brother. You were something elsewhere forever, leading by example. Maintaining dignity, duty, and decency, a combination of qualities hard to find in people today. I will only remember you for all the kindness you bestowed upon my children, wife, and myself. My kids were like your kids, from birth to you and your other uncle, Lutchman, who passed away two years ago, but always there for them. You all show them love and the compassion for which they were ever grateful. Your passing brought tears to their eyes. Matthew, may you remember the quotation which you mentioned to him a years ago, in which you quoted, God is slow, but he is sure. My children and I are so hurt that we cannot see you for the last time, but we will always remember you for the good times we shared together. I know you are in better place right now, free from all pain and suffering, and I know we will meet again some of the Lord Jesus assured us a poem by my brother, the book he says. We little know that evening that God was going to call you your name. In life we loved you dearly, in death we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you. You did not go alone, for part of us went with you the day God called you home. You left us peaceful memories. Your love is still our guide. Your life was a blessing, your memory a treasure. You are loved beyond words and missed beyond measure. We are gathered here today in the memory of my brother Peter. Oh, sorry, that's the only. And though we cannot see you, you are always at our side. Our family chain is broken, and nothing seems the same. But if the Lord calls, one by one, the chain link will again 
gone but not forgotten. I love you, big brother. Rest in peace. Yes. Now, I'm just a close friend of Brother Peter, but we live closer than brother. We became friends approximately 60 years ago. And whenever we spoke, especially on the telephone, we always go more than an hour. He was such a loving guy, great and mighty. I will always remember him. And we have things in common. He was born in June. I also was born in June. And today, he has born on the other side. So he left a challenge also for me to continue living this life. Because I know when the road is called up yonder, I will be seeing my brother Peter on the other side. Thank you very much. Peter C. Nath Ram Subhag, so the firstborn son of Ram Subhag Jairam and Paso Ram Subhag, both now deceased. He passed away on 4th July 2021 at the Westview Medical Hospital at the age of 78 years. My brother Peter attended Chagona's Government School, Endeavor Hindu School, College of St. Philip and St. James and Presentation College Shabona. He graduated in 1961 with the higher school certificate in French, Spanish and History. For more than 20 years, Brother Peter was a Sunday school teacher at the Assembly of God Church in Egypt, Trace. He taught the students diligently and served with great dedication and responsibility. He worked in the public service for 34 years, culminating his career as an administrative officer when he took early retirement to care for his ill parents. My brother Peter was a very caring and considerate person who spent lots of time and effort with his parents and greatly assisting his siblings in their activities. He leaves behind many friends and colleagues who hold him in high esteem. He was a humble, dedicated, and sincere servant of the Lord and remained a student throughout his life, reading and studying the Holy Scriptures and reference books daily. Even when he was on vacation. My brother Peter has run a good race and is now called by the Lord to be with him eternally. May his journey be without any diversions and distractions so that he'll, he will soon be with our Heavenly Father. We are all grateful for having known my brother Peter. May God grant him eternal rest now and forever. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brothers Boise and Brothers Chichan. My beloved, you have heard so many things. So many, my beloved men, great comments about our dear brother. And I can tell you, my beloved men, I have known Brother Peter for a very long time. Because we attended the same college. In those days it was called St. Philip's and St. James. And then the last year of our stay there, we went over to Presentation College. And I have known him since then. And what made it much merrier, when I accepted the Lord 42 years ago, I believe again a new relationship started with Brother Peter because we attended the same assembly for many years. And I can tell you my beloved men, and there are many other brothers here who can vouch for that. Brother Peter was one of the greatest Sunday school teachers that you can ever think about. And he touched the lives of many, many, many people. Today many of them, they are great grandmothers, grandmothers, I beloved. And I'm sure that all they have been blessed 
to the life of this our brother. My Lord. He has touched the lives of so many people. My Lord. And this is the reason why we thank God for such a great soul. I'm going to just leave it, my beloved. But two short, my beloved, tributes for my beloved amen. Any brother or sister who wants to say something, my beloved. Two minutes, I'll give you each. And if there's no response, then I'll be happy to go on with our program. Amen. Larry. We are going to the Word of God. This evening, the Word of God is so important to every one of us. Especially in these times of grief and sorrow and heaviness of heart, I believe. We need the Word of God more than ever. Our scripture reading will be taken from St. John's Gospel, chapter 11. When you have time, you can go home and read that entire chapter for yourself. I just want to read a few verses. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had laid him in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs up, and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever, praise the Lord, shall ask of God, God will give it to thee. Jesus answered and said unto her, Your brother shall live again. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God which should come into the world. Amen? May we bow our heads in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, the great I am that I am, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the giver and the sustainer of all that is living, as we, your people, bow before your presence, Lord, we bless you and we worship you and we adore you. And we thank you, Lord, that we are still found in the land of the living. We give you praise our and our glory. Father, we thank you that we can read from your holy and inspired word. And we pray, divine Holy Spirit, you will break unto us the bread of life. That we, your people, Lord, as we listen to your word, Father, we will be blessed to your word. Father, let these words be a comfort to every one of us, especially, Lord, to the bereaved family. Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory as we ask this prayer with thanksgiving. In the holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God, praise Jesus.
Job, a great servant of God. My brother, a man who was very upright in the eyes of Almighty God. But yet his life was tested to a great extent. The devil, my beloved, challenged God concerning his servant Job. Amen. And in his suffering, he said, my beloved, in Job chapter 40, of trouble. Like a flower, he comes forth and withers. He flees like a shadow and does not remain. How true are these words? We as human beings, my beloved, some of us are blessed. According to the psalm, so many are blessed like Brother Peter, three score and ten. My beloved, and if by the grace of God we reach eighty plus, he says, Yet, my beloved, our life will be full of trouble and struggle. Amen. Amen. But one day, my beloved, whether we live to be a hundred or eighty or sixty or forty, whatever, and you are seeing what is happening in our country. With this, my beloved, pandemic, young, old, middle-aged, all of kind of people are dying. Amen. And this is what the Word of God is telling us here. A day is going to come when we have to face the reality that God is going to call us to be with Him on the other side. We have read that Psalm 90 and what it says in one of the books, as for the days of our life is 70 years and 80 if we have strength. Yet the span is but full of trouble and sorrow. For they quickly pass and we fly away. Glory to God. According to the Holy Word of God, every one of us present here, someday, someday, my beloved, we are going to breathe our last breath, our heart will stop beating. I believe it, amen. And that will be the end of our journey here on the face of the earth. But after we die, my beloved, that is not the end of our life. Every human being will go on to live forever in a resurrected bodily form. Either in a place called heaven or in a place called hell. Amen. Amen? Jesus our Lord and Savior, speaking in John chapter 5, hear what he said. Do not be amazed, do not be surprised at this for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice that is the voice of the Lord Jesus and shall come out those who have done good to a resurrection of life and those who have done evil to a resurrection of damnation or judgment Amen So we have read from the Word of God. And we see here, my beloved, amen, this brother Lazarus had died. And he left behind his two sisters, Martha and Mary. Today our brother has passed away. He has left his siblings, my beloved, amen, behind. And others, all the loved ones, my beloved. And when someone dies, as we see here today, family members, friends, neighbors, another well-wisher, 
they will show up at your home. I don't know, to bring some kind of comfort and consolation to you. As in the case of Martha and Mary, the Bible records, it says, many of the Jews came. Many of the Jews came, my beloved. You don't know how many people it was, but it was a large crowd. They came, my beloved, to bring comfort and to console those sisters, Martha and Mary. Today, it is still the custom. When a loved one passed away, my beloved, people will turn out, friends and family and neighbors, to sympathize with them, I will. And this is the reason why, you know, it was normal. The kind of crowd you have seen my here, here my beloved. You have been amazed. amazed. So the word of God tells us a messenger went went my beloved ahead and informed Martha that Jesus was on his way. Jesus was coming. Right. If you look at the word of God, Jesus delayed his coming for a very purpose. To prove his power, my beloved, amen, as God in the flesh. Praise the Lord. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, the word of God says, she went to meet him. But the other sister stayed back behind. She was so sad probably and broken hearted that she remained home. I will. Receive here from the word of God, Martha, my beloved, when she approached Jesus, what it says? Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, see how she addresses the Lord, the Lord. And today, my beloved, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus was my, my beloved and is the Lord of our late brother. Amen. How many of us will own and, my beloved, amen, accept him as our Lord this evening? Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Martha recognized and knew the power of the Lord Jesus. Why? Because she had heard previously of Jesus raising Jairus' daughter. She had also heard about my beloved Amen, the woman at Nain. How Jesus raised up her son from the dead. So it tell us here. Right. He said, Lord, if you were here, my brother would have surely lived. Amen. But I know, look at what that word. Although her brother had died, the Bible says four days had already passed. He said, but I know that even now, whatsoever you will ask of God, he will give it to you. Amen. Amen. So although her brother died, my beloved, and Jesus was not there at that moment, yet we see, my beloved, an element of hope that she is expressing. Lord, I know, I know, Lord, if you ask God the Father for anything, it will, you will, it, he, he will grant it unto you. That is the confidence that she had in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 27. I love it. You see later on also, put that together with verse 22. Right. You say what? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ. The word Christ, my beloved man, is Greek. And in the Hebrew, it is Messiah. He said, I know that you are the Messiah. You are the one that is promised by Almighty God to come on the face of the earth and to set mankind free. I know. Amen. I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. 
What a great testimony. What a great confession made by this dear sister. I believe. And I wish to God and I pray to God that many of us who are here today, my beloved, can say like Martha, I know that you are the Messiah. Praise the Lord. Glory. Amen. And you are the Son of God. We serve one God this evening. One God who has manifested himself, my beloved, in three persons as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. The triune God. Praise the Lord. Glory. So she made a bold confession. My beloved. Amen. Then in verse 23, Jesus continues the conversation. Jesus said unto her, Praise the Lord. Words of comfort. Your brother shall rise again. Amen. Amen? Your brother shall rise again. Amen. Words of comfort. And my beloved to the very family, the same promise that Jesus gave to Martha, he's giving us that same power promise this afternoon. But we have to believe. Glory. Amen. Look at Martha's reply. Martha said unto him, I know, Lord, I know, I have that assurance that he shall live. He shall rise again in the resurrection in the last day. Praise the Lord. I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection in the last day. The question I ask, do you believe in the resurrection? Well, the resurrection day is going to come, brother. And it is going to come for all men. Whether you are a believer in Christ or whether you are not a believer, a resurrection day is coming according to what Jesus said. Amen. And those who live righteously in the fear of Almighty God and trusting the Lord Jesus, He says they shall be raised up to life. But the wicked, the ungodly, He says, my beloved, they also will be raised the damnation and judgment. Glory. So Martha knew about the resurrection being a Jew. And studying the Bible beloved the Old Testament scripture. So she was fully convinced that a resurrection day is coming. Jesus again said in John 6, And this is the will of him that sent him. That everyone who sees the Son and believes on Him. Well, in this age, we have not seen Jesus in the flesh. But by faith, we believe in Him. Amen. And by faith, my beloved, we put our trust in Him. Praise the Lord. And this is the will of Him that sent me. That everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up on the last day. This is the reason why the scripture says in John Michael 3 and 16 For God so loved the world Almighty God, Jehovah God Almighty He said for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son Jesus Christ of Nazareth that whosoever, like Brother Peter and the many other members of the family, my beloved, all the saints of God, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish. What does that word perish mean? It means, my beloved, amen, you will not have to face the second death. The second death is eternal separation. From the presence of Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory. I will. And then he goes on to say, my beloved. So what he's telling us here. 
when he says, my beloved, and whosoever, Jesus said unto him, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes on me, though he were dead, yet shall, yet shall he live. What we are seeing here in the coffin is the earthly remains of our dear brother. But the real, my, my brother Peter, his soul and his spirit, the moment he breathed the last breath, praise be to Almighty God. The angels of God were there, my beloved, amen, to escort his soul and his spirit to that place called paradise. Amen. This is where the poor beggar, Lazarus, in Luke chapter 16, this is where he was after death. Amen. This is where, my beloved, amen, the thief who hung on the cross, one of the thieves who hung on the cross together with Jesus. What he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And what was Jesus' reply? Today, Amen. today you will be with me in paradise. Amen. Praise be to Almighty God. Amen. Glory. So we do not have to fear death as a believer in the Lord Jesus. Glory. Amen. Also, my beloved, he said what? Do ye that believe in me shall never die. And they that live and believe in me shall never die, my beloved. Praise be to Almighty God. What is speaking about? I won't go to that in detail. But in John chapter 14, Jesus said, my beloved, to his disciples, Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. You believe in God, believe in me also. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. So Jesus speaking as God in the flesh, he was comforting his disciples in my father's house, speaking about heaven. My beloved. And heaven, my beloved, is a reality. Just as we believe that heaven is a reality, so we must believe that hell also is a reality. Amen. And he said, if I go, if, if, amen. I go to prepare a place for you. If it were not so I told you, I will. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Now people today are questioning the authority of the word of God. They said, look how long, almost 2,000 years, and Jesus says he's going to come back. Well, God's timing is not like us. Amen. amen. He will come, my beloved, amen, when it is the proper time. Amen. He said, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will receive you, that where I am, there you may be also. Praise the Lord. Glory. And to support John, my beloved, amen, 14 and those verses, Brother Paul, a great servant of God, writing in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, what he says, my beloved, amen. For if he believed that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep, that is those who die, in Jesus will God bring with him. Amen? So he's telling us here what will happen in due time. And I believe more than ever that we are living, my beloved, in a time when Jesus can put in his appearance anytime. Amen. But are we ready? Amen. He says what will happen? He says the Lord Jesus himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And what will happen, praise be to Almighty God? The dead in Christ. Let us get that clear this evening. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Brother Peter, our late dad, my beloved, his mom and his other brother who passed away. I don't know. 
He said, the dead in Christ and all the other saints, believers, my beloved, in the Lord Jesus Christ, when Jesus gave that shout and the trumpet sound, he said, they are going to rise up. Whether they are buried or whether they are burned, God Almighty, my beloved, is the God of the impossible. If he can speak the world in existence, my beloved, without anything, he has the power to do what he would say. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And he said that we who are alive and remain, that is the saints of God. This is what we call the rapture. You wouldn't see that word rapture in your Bible. Amen. He said then we, we who are alive and remain shall caught up together with them in the clouds. And that word caught up is where you get the word rapture from. Amen. Amen. He said they shall be caught up, my beloved, in the clouds together with those who have already, my beloved, gone up. Praise be to Almighty God. I believe the word of God. And what he says, the most important thing and the most glorious thing, to meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the air. Amen. 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 I'll tag on that over just very quickly. The second coming of Jesus will be in two phases. The first one is when he comes in the air. And he will call all the saints, whether dead or alive, to be with him there. And then after that, woe be unto this earth. Amen. What we're seeing here, this pandemic, the smoke, that is only the beginning of sorrow. The real thing coming behind, brother. Amen. So after the saints are taken up, the Bible says there will be seven years of tribulation on the face of the earth. Trouble that the earth has never seen. And at the end of that seven years, Jesus will be coming back riding on that white horse as King of kings and Lord of lords. Praise be to Almighty God. And when he comes back, he's going to destroy the Antichrist. A great powerful ruler who will mislead the world. I don't know, and cause them to turn away from Almighty God. And Jesus will destroy the Antichrist and all the enemies of the Jewish people and the Christians in Jesus' name. Glory to God. I believe. So let us believe that there is a resurrection day coming. I believe. Jesus our Lord, he died. And he was in the tomb for three days and three nights. And praise be to Almighty God. After three days and three nights, the grave couldn't humble him. He walked out of that grave triumphantly. Praise be to Almighty God. But a Paul writing, he says, But now is Christ risen from the dead and be became the first fruits of them that slept. That is those who died. There are other people who were raised from the dead. But the difference with Jesus, that when he rose from the dead, my beloved, I mean, he rose never to die again. And at this moment, he is alive in heaven. Sitting at the right hand of God the Father, praise be to Almighty God. And according to the word of God, he's going to come back very soon. Amen. In closing, the word of God warns us. Said it is appointed unto men once to die. Once to die, one day will have to die. But after that is the judgment. Glory. Amen. Every one of us have to make an important decision. It takes a great decision on your behalf, on my behalf, to enter into that place called heaven. You heard my beloved eulogy. Brother Peter accepted the Lord at a very early age. And so many of us, we accept the Lord probably later on in life. I do. Amen. So my beloved, amen, he takes a decision this evening on your part. The gift of eternal life in heaven with the Lord Jesus and Almighty God and the saints of God with the holy angels will and can be yours. 
only if you repent of your sin confess your sins to Almighty God and turn away praise the Lord Jesus says in John chapter 3 he that believe on him is not condemned but he that believes not is condemned already because he has not believed in my beloved, praise the Lord, in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That name has power. Amen. That name has authority. Amen. And my beloved, if you want to be saved, my beloved, we must confess the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We must confess Him with our mouth and believe in our hearts that God raised Him from the dead. Praise the Lord. And then in verse 36 it says, He that believes on the Son, Jesus, will have everlasting life. He who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of Almighty God, the judgment of Almighty God, will abide on him or her. Amen. And the, the last book of the Bible, in one of the verses, hear what it says. Revelation chapter 20 speaking about the great white throne judgment. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire which burneth with brimstone. Angels and the millions of saints who have gone before. Or if we continue to reject Jesus, my beloved Amen and spurn him. There's a place of waiting of That is what we call the lake of fire which burns the crimson. The Bible of it, there is no escape once you enter into hell. It's a place where you'll have to remain forever and ever and ever without end. Is your name written? Is your name written in the book of life? And I beg of you, I appeal to you this evening as I close. My beloved, surrender your heart to the Lord Jesus. Give Jesus a chance in your life. My beloved, surrender your will and your heart to him. He's knocking at your heart's door. Do not harden your heart. One day, my beloved amen, you'll have to go on the other side. Jesus is speaking to you. Amen. From his word. I appeal and I beg and I beseech you out of love. Surrender your heart to the Lord Jesus. And when death knocks at your door, you have absolutely nothing to fear. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. So my beloved, before we bring the last prayer, let us all stand. On the last page of your program, they're going to take that closing song. When the roll is called up yonder. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and then shall be no more. And the morning breaks into the bright and fair. When the sleep of the gather over on the other shore. And the roll is called up
Dedicus song. Let us hope, my beloved, you mean what we sing. When the goal is up, yonder, your name will not be missing. May we bow our head. Have faith in God. Have faith in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Eternal Father, Amen. the great I am that I am, the Alpha and the Omega, as we, your people, bow before your holy presence, Father, we bless your name. We worship you. We adore you, Lord, and we exalt you and we glorify you. Loving Father, we thank you. From the commencement of our service until this very hour. Thank you for your presence being with us and leading us, Father, all to the week. Thank you, Lord, for the psalm that was read. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, Father, the songs of praise. Father, we thank you most of all for your word. And I pray, Lord God Almighty, these words will find a place in the heart of some lost soul. But, Father, they will turn to you someday, and they will be saved for your kingdom. Father, I pray you'll bless every brother, every sister, every friend, every neighbor, every well-wisher. Father, we ask for your blessing, Lord, upon every one of us, your people. Father, we thank you in a special way for Brother Peter's siblings, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the Brother Moti, away, Lord God Almighty, in America. Bless him and bless, O Lord, his family, especially their two children, Lord. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, our Brother Sicharan, may you bless him, Father. Bless Brother Richard. And thank you, Lord, for the two sisters, Sister Savitri and Sister Sheila. Father, we pray, Lord God Almighty, for your touch upon your life. And Father, especially at this moment, Lord, give them that strength, give them that faith, give them that courage, Lord. Father, give them that support that they need, dear Father, in this hour, Lord, of their grief and sorrow. And Father, we thank you once again for all that was said and done, to your honor and to your glory. Father, and we are part in a little while when we're we'll leaving here to go to the cremation site. We thank you, Lord, for traveling mercy. Amen. We cover everyone who will be going there, Lord, and all those who will be going back to their homes. We cover every one of them under the blood of Jesus. And thank you, Lord, for your divine protection over every one of us. Father, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory as we ask this prayer with thanksgiving and with the forgiveness of all our sins. In the holy name of your Son, Yes, you are the Messiah. As we lift our hands and we say, Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise Jesus. Praise the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Ask of David to bring the blessing for us. The Lord bless us. The Lord keep us. The Lord make His face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord lift up his light of his countenance and give us his riches, peace and blessing, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. May the Lord keep watch. Keep me up, you and I, while we are absent, one from another, in Jesus' holy name, in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you can be seated. I say God richly bless you, my dear brothers and sisters, my friends, neighbors, my kids, who have come here to support the family, to enjoy the Lord and his family love. And the love also for us to live with us. And those who are going on, my beloved amen, for their groups and stuff. I do hope to take a time on the road, my beloved, and on the way in this morning. God bless you again. I know that you can tell you one of our family members from the world. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
thank you for your prayer. I do and I do hope that you'll continue to remember this family in the name of Jesus. God bless you. I do love it. Enjoy the rest of the evening in Jesus.